Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm going to answer all your burning question on what it's like to actually be a small beauty YouTuber here on YouTube. Do I make a lot of money? Is it worth it? Is it something I want to do in the long haul? I answer everything you guys ask me. So if you guys want to see what these questions are, what the answers are, and if I'm about to expose myself, well then definitely keep on watching. Okay, so I've actually done a few videos like this before on my channel, but I've been seeing the trend going around yet again where people are asking small beauty YouTubers or just small YouTubers in general what it's really like being here on YouTube. So I went on Instagram and I put up a questionnaire and I just asked you guys to ask me questions of what it's really like to be a small influencer and I'm here to answer everything that you guys asked. So I'm not gonna like ramble on. We're just gonna go ahead and dive straight on into this because I'm gonna try to answer as many questions as possible. So one other the first questions is can you pay your bills being a small youtuber or is it with your hubby support so it's, honestly i youtube you get paid once a month you get paid every 21st of the month and youtube doesn't even pay you google pays you and up until now whatever you made you got paid but i do know that i believe starting june 1st 2021 they are going to start taking taxes out of our earnings which i'm actually really grateful for because there's a lot that really goes into taxes when you are a YouTuber or like a self-employed person that I kind of learned this year. And uh, luckily I still kind of had my paycheck from, you know, my, my, my job and it's definitely a big learning lesson. So I'm very grateful to have taxes taken out, but do I pay my bills? I'm able to pay my bills and that's pretty much it. I do not make a substantial income. Like people think that I do for some reason because I think people think that if you're on the internet or you're in the beauty community, you somehow make all this money. And that's just simply not the case. It doesn't matter how many subscribers that you have here on YouTube. What honestly matters is how much watch time you have on your videos. So typically, you can go to like Social Blade, for example, and you can kind of get a gist of what people make, but it's not fully accurate. But a while back, I did a video on the Endangered Cosmetics where I did a review on the Red Panda palette. And I said that I was going to take that AdSense from that video and I was going to match it with my own and donate the AdSense from that video and send it off to the Red Panda Network to donate to them. And in that video, no shame, I made $52.50. So I ended up donating, I ended up donating $112 to the Red Panda Network. That's pretty much on average what you could potentially see. And that video only has 3,000 views. And that's typically where I end up on all my YouTube videos. It's about 3,000 views, if not a little less, sometimes a little more. So it really honestly depends on how long the person's watching your video for and how many people are actually watching your video. It doesn't matter, again, about the subscriber count. It really matters how many people are clicking on your video. So if you see someone who has a lot of views, typically they're gonna make a lot more money. It doesn't matter about their subscriber size. If they're making, if, if someone like me, I could have 35,000 subscribers, but only get 3,000 views, or someone could maybe have 10,000 subscribers, but every single video they get 20, 30, 40,000 views, they're gonna make way more money than I'm gonna make. So it really just honestly depends. But right now I only make enough truly to cover my bills. It's why I do have a patreon to kind of cover a little bit of extra so i can do the giveaways for you guys and so that i can buy the makeup and review it for you guys other than that i'm i'm not i'm not making that much money like people always think i do and i'm like guys i'm able to buy the things that i do because of freaking afterpay <laughs> like afterpay is the only reason why i'm able to do it and my husband because my husband does make pretty good money at disney and i'm still waiting to be called back that's a number one question i got a lot back is if i'm not returning back to my job or this and that. I'm still on furlough. I'm still waiting to hear back from them. I don't know if I am or not. I did get my resume going and I have been sending my resume out to a lot of different places just because it's been over a year now and I just don't know how much longer I can wait. So yeah, I, 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 I could pay my bills, but pretty much just my bills and my husband does have to cover a lot of it. So I, I'm very, very grateful for to him. And one day I hope to make more substantial income where I can take care of both of us. Like that's my dream, but I'm just, I'm honestly not there yet. Do people change around you after becoming a YouTuber? Not that I've noticed, but the only thing I have noticed is that people that I haven't talked to in years starts to reach out to me going, hey, so I'm starting a YouTube channel and I was wondering if you can give me all this advice. Can you help me out? Can you promote me on your channel? I get that all the time. 
And it's not just from people that I know. A lot of it's from people that I don't know as well. I get consistent DMs every single day of people begging me to just promote them on their channel. And uh, I just, I don't want to be used like that. Like, I don't mind helping people out. Like, if I know you, and I don't mind helping people out, like, giving them advice on how to get started on YouTube. But just to flat out promote you, like, no, I don't, if we don't talk, I don't know you. Like, I, that just makes me feel like I'm being used. Do you turn down a lot of offers for PR or sponsorships to only do the ones that you really like? Uh, no, um, I don't ever really get offers for PR. I am still incredibly small. I mean, it may not seem that way, but I'm still like a micro influencer or still a small influencer. I barely, barely have brands reach out to me. And if they do, it comes with big stipulations for the majority of the part. They will be willing to send me stuff if I'm willing to do a free review in return and, uh, it just gets to be a little too much when these brands want to send you products for like $25, $30, but want a free review in return. But you have to say X, Y, Z, you have to put these codes in, you have to put this link in. And it just can be a little much, especially when they watch your video, they'll sometimes write back to you and be like, Hey, that's great. But can you do this? Can you change this? And I'm like, I'm doing this for free. Like, yeah, I got a free product out of it, sure. But at the end of the day, this is still my time. Like this is still the time, the hours that I spend filming the video and then to edit the video takes hours. The thumbnail, the the promotion, that the talking to everybody, to responding to comments, to promoting it on Twitter, IG, doing TikToks, like, it just can be a lot. So no, I don't really ever get PR offers. And if I do, it's mostly come to stipulations. As for sponsorships, the only brands that ever reach out to me for sponsorships are <laughs> like TDY eye contact lenses or these kids toys on Amazon or laser hair removal on Amazon. Like all these Amazon gadgets that I don't ever use. And I don't believe in promoting something to you guys I never use myself and or have not tried and been using for a while. So I just ignore those emails point blank because no, especially since I've been burned. My, I, if you guys don't know, I had my very, very first sponsorship with OYS, which is a clothing company, and they told me they were going to give me $100 to promote my video, and they would send me a $100 gift card to buy all the clothes to do the sponsored video, which was great because I got free clothes out of it, which was cool, but they never did pay me, and they dipped out right after the video and just never paid me for it, so... I, I've had some really, and the same thing with like a uh, luxury scent, luxury scent box. They were the same exact way, uh, offered to pay me. I did the video and then they dipped out and never paid me. So the only one that actually stuck to their word was bling brushes. No other brand has actually kept up with it. So how much hate do you get? Uh, the most hate that I honestly ever get is on a, Boxy Charm or Ipsy video. People really tend to hate me on those videos if I say something they don't like or if I don't want to keep a product or try a product because I know it just isn't going to work for me and I'd rather not just try it one time, never use it again and let it go to waste. So I usually just put into No Waste Wednesday. People get really offended by that for some reason. I don't understand why because what I do with the product that I get shouldn't bother you but i guess for some reason it does bother people because well you're on pr you sound like a spoiled brat because you don't want to keep this or you sound entitled because you don't want to use the product it's it's like a, a lose-lose situation because if i say the box is great people are going to rag on me if it's not a great box if i say the box is horrible i don't want to keep anything people rag on me because i'm a spoiled little brat who should be grateful for a free 25 five dollar box that i still do pay for and it's like a lose-lose situation when it comes to those videos it's why typically i don't really pay too much attention to the comment section full much when it comes to boxy charm and ipsy because there are some people who just want to be negative because i don't like x y or z about it and or want to give away the products i know i'm not going to use but other than that, I don't really get hate on other videos. Sometimes it just depends, usually about like my makeup skills or if I voice an opinion about something people don't like agree with, people just can sometimes be aggressive. But I do, I have no shame saying this. I do have block words on my channel because people were aggressive way back in the day. And I just have block words just for my own mental health. I don't need you to say, go fuck you, bitch, and all type of stuff. Like, I don't need to see that. So I just, I tend to have block words. I know some people are kind of iffy about that, but I don't mind having it just because it's, it's for my own mental health, you know?
how do you get brands to how do you reach out to brands to get pr um kylie that is a very good question i don't know because <laughs> like i said i'm barely on anyone's list i barely get pr so i i could not tell you on that one i am so sorry do you feel bad when you don't want to review something that others want you to yes i get tagged in products all the time i get tagged and i get sent dms of all these like new releases like people begging me please review this this please review that and i i feel bad because i want to make everybody happy and i, and I want to review everything that people want me to review but one i financially just can't afford to review every single thing out there and two if i'm going to spend the money i want to spend on stuff i genuinely am excited about and really want to try so i do feel bad and i'm and i and i usually respond back to people like oh I'm not going to review this and this is the reason why. And they're always so nice about it, but I do really feel bad because I don't want to let anyone down, you know? So as much as I want to, there's just sometimes I just, I can't. And sometimes I just not interested in it. How do you deal with all the criticism? I want to make videos, but I'm scared for that. Um, you just, I don't want to say that you get used to it, but sadly you do. Um, when I first started YouTube, I was so afraid of criticism. I was so afraid of people judging me for whatever they were judging me for. Like I have not the straightest teeth. Like I have a little bit of a crooked tooth right there. And the amount of criticism I got that when I first started YouTube was just overwhelming. People would be like, oh my God, you'd be so much prettier if you had straighter teeth. Or if I didn't have my nails done, oh my God, you would be so much prettier if you didn't have, if you had your nails done and be an actual professional YouTuber. Like the amount of things that people would nitpick you on it's just insane to me. Um, there's some things I can't control, like my physical appearance, how my nose is shaped, how my face is shaped. Like there's just some things I don't have control over and I do apologize for that. But you just kind of get used to it because you start to realize that over time, these people who want to criticize you are just criticizing you because they want to do exactly what you're doing or they're unhappy with their own life. And I've learned to not take it so personal and just kind of let it roll off my shoulder. I read it, I delete it, and I move on and I try not to let it get to me because at the end of the day, the amount of overwhelming love always overpowers the negative. And sometimes the negative is the loudest, but those are the very few and far between compared to the, all the love. You got to start to focus on the love and realize at the end of the day, do what makes you happy. If the people want to hate, let them hate, but you're still thriving. You're still doing you and uh, try not to let it get to you if, if you can. It's you're human and you're allowed to be like, oh, because trust me, I still have my moments, but at the end of the day, I love what I'm doing. So I'm not going to let anyone stop me from living my dream. So don't let anyone stop you from living yours. And do you have a normal job besides YouTube? Yes, I'm a server at Disney, but I'm still furloughed. I'm still waiting to be called back. I'm hoping by July, if Disney goes back to full capacity by then, but that is my normal job and I have been putting out applications out there. So we'll see what happens. How long did it take you to get monetized and what prevented you from giving up? Um, so I originally started my channel, oh, I wanna say it was in February of 2018 or 2017 like I, I started my channel back in like 2013 I just created a YouTube channel but I never did anything with it but I think I really posted my first video around like February 14th I want to say it was like 2017 2018 and I stopped for a couple months if I stopped after like six or seven videos I took like a six months break and then I came back and I only had like 200 subscribers then so I know I came back in October of 2018. It was 2018. I came back in October of 2018. I got monetized in May of 2019. So you have to hit a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. So to correlate that, you can kind of look at your channel analytics. You have to have about 80,000 views in total on your channel. That roughly can correlate to around 4,000 hours just depending on how long your videos are. I always recommend doing 10 minutes and above just because YouTube loves longer videos. And the longer your video is, the more you can get that watch time up but you have to have a thousand views and 4,000 hours watch time in order to get monetized. And when you do, you don't get your first paycheck until you hit over a hundred dollars. So I happened to get my first paycheck just because I did a Jaclyn Hill video and where, how I felt about Jaclyn Hill. I happened to get paid from that video. And, um, that's still the most money I've ever made from a YouTube video was that video, but it's no longer on my channel. But I, uh, I, you had to make $100 from that point. And once you make $100, you get paid every 21st of the month. But um, yeah, it was definitely, I was never expecting to hit 1,000 subscribers. So to get like a, a, a that mark, I was like, oh, I can make a little money. That was really intriguing, but I still kept doing it. But the reason why I didn't give up is because 
honest to God, I love doing this. And it's so cool to kind of like, it's so cringy, but it's so cool to kind of like look at back, look back at my first video to see how I was then to how I am now. And it's just so different to watch the growth. Like YouTube gave me a backbone that I never thought that I would have. I never in a million years felt comfortable being on camera or being in person without having makeup on. I was so self-conscious about how I looked. I'd never thought I was beautiful. never thought I was pretty. And YouTube really gave me that confidence to be able to stand here, bare face, be myself. And I fall in love with myself because of it. Cause I would never love myself before then, but YouTube gave me that. And it wasn't even just the, the sweet things you guys would say. It's just me realizing that this is what I love. This is what I'm passionate about. And, and if these people can watch me and love me, then I should love me too. Like I should accept me for me too. And Every day when I'd see the comments, because there's been numerous times, I mean like numerous times I've wanted to give up. I wanted to call it quits, leave my channel, give up, go find a different job. Um, the reason why I didn't is because every time I was about to, it's like you guys knew and I would get a DM about someone saying, you saved my life, you changed my life, you pulled me out of my depression, you, you've given me strength and courage I never thought I could have. And I'm like, but wait, I didn't, I didn't do anything. I just like came on camera and just was myself. And they would send me these messages and I was just like, I can't leave. I can't leave because my subscribers are showing up for me every single day. Then I need to show up for them every single day. I can't just walk away because I'm in a bad funk. I need to just pick my head up rise up and just do what I love because at the end of the day this is what I love and I don't ever want to walk away from a dream because I've had this quote in my head for years that I learned from Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones and he had said when he was 29 years old he left his job um to go be an actor and started off from scratch started off from zero and had nothing to his name and he said that you only fail when you stop trying and that your dreams will never give up on you, but don't give up on your dreams. And that stuck with me for so long. So I knew as much as sometimes I wanna give up, I'm not going to, because you only fail when you stop trying. And I'm never gonna stop trying to live my dream because this is my dream. This is what I'm passionate about. This is what I love doing. And why, why would I wanna give up my dream? Like, so what if I'm not big? So what if I can't financially afford wanting to do this right now? At the end of the day, I don't care because this is what I love. They could take away everything. They could take away the money, anything that comes with it. And I would still show up here every day because this, this is this is what I feel deep down to my core that I am meant to do. I'm meant to be on here to talk to you guys and just have fun being myself, playing with makeup and just enjoying every single part of it. So don't give up. Have you ever been recognized in public yet? I have on several occasions. The first time was at my job um, that I got recognized, but I it was the it was my AGM's daughter, so I kind of didn't like really count that one too much. And another one was from was at a Morphe launch. A beautiful subscriber, Kara, came up to me and she was like, "Hi, Allie," and this I'll never forget. It was like 4:30 in the morning. This is for the conspiracy launch with Jeffrey Star and Shane Dawson. I was sitting at the very front of the line, and Kara came up to me and she was like. Hi, like I wasn't paying attention because I was, I was talking to someone lying right next to me and she was like pointing to Corey, like oh, I'm trying to talk to her and Corey taps and I look up and she's like, hi Allie, I'm one of your subscribers. And I was like, I look like shit. <laughs> like, oh my God, it's 4.30 in the morning. I look like total, like I just rolled out of bed, threw on the sweats, didn't brush my hair. Luckily enough, I brushed my teeth and she was so sweet she's like can i get a photo of you and i was like yeah absolutely and i kept apologizing too like i'm so sorry look i shit like i am so sorry like i just felt like ah oh, you meet me and i look like garbage and i was just like so nervous i was so nervous to meet her because i've only ever met one big youtuber besides paige i met jacqueline hill and she is just how she is in person as she is online she was wonderful but i'm so scared that i would meet another youtuber and be really disappointed because when i worked at disney um at my restaurant we'd have celebrities come in all the time and they're never what you think they are most of them are just assholes and i i'd never cared for them i it changed my perspective of them and i never wanted that to be for me i've always wanted to be exactly what you guys see because this is who i am i never shy away from being myself and so when i met a subscriber i was like <laughs> like i started hyperventilating i looked at corey and i was like <laughs> Do you think she liked me? Do you think she liked me? Like I, I said, hi, like I was freaking out and I talked about it all day, all day. Cause I could not get over the fact that a subscriber recognized me. And I just want to make sure that like she liked me and she approved of me. I was so scared. And then another time I was at Universal Studios and this is when it's like back in like October, 
I got recognized by two, two different people there. And the first time I was with my best friend and we were taking off our masks to quickly take a photo. And this is when masks were still being enforced 100%. And we're taking off our masks because no one around. I was like, okay, perfect, perfect, perfect. And this lady walks up, beautiful dress. And I thought that she was an employee. And she's like, Allie. And I looked over and I was like, oh my God, we're in trouble. And she's like, hi, I'm one of your subscribers. I recognize Corey. And I was like, oh, phew. I thought I was getting in trouble. And I was like, oh my God, how are you? Nice to meet you again. <laughs> Looked like shit. I look like shit in public. I, I never look like this in public. So I do apologize. And she was just so sweet. Um, we did like a little air hug. And I was like, I wish we could take a photo. But this is bad. COVID was still hardcore going on. And she was the nicest person. And then I had gone out to eat later on that day at one of the dining restaurants. And someone recognized me there. And I thought like, it's just I never like think of myself as a YouTuber, like when I go out, like it's just not in my head because um, I just don't associate myself like that. Some people say, Ali, I look over like, I'm not writing a name to, oh, hi, how do you, how do you know my name? You know, like that's how my mindset works. So they were so sweet. And those are the only times I've ever gotten recognized. I remember one time I was with Paige inside Morphe and someone recognized Paige inside Morphe and I got to stand there and watch and just smile in the background. Like, yay, like this is so cool to watch. And uh, yeah, I have. And I just know that like, I'm more scared to meet you and I have more anxiety to meet you than I think you will have ever of me. Cause I will legit sweat. I'll want to be like, I got a shit. Like I start to freak out and I will probably talk about it all day long. Like I'll be, I'll be in, I'll be internally going over the exact conversation because I'm gonna be like, okay, okay. Was, did I, did I say the right things? Did I, did I smile? Did I, did I give him a hug? Like, did, did I smell okay? Oh my God. How's my makeup? Like I, that, that just, just know that I will be freaking out about it. <laughs> Is it weird talking to a camera? And if yes, do you get used to it? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, it was very weird at first. If you guys, like I said, if you go back to watch my very first video, you can see how, please don't watch my first video. It is horrible by the way. But if you do, you can really see how nervous I was. But I think over time, when you start to realize that you're just in a room by yourself with the camera, it starts to become more natural. And then when you start to know that at the end of the day, you are gonna have people watching you. I don't know, it just, you do just get used to it over time. Like I used to be really uh, like embarrassed to film in front of Corey and now I could care less. And same thing with Paige. I was really embarrassed to film in front of Paige and now I could care less. So, and now my friends, cause I have Patreon and every single week for Patreon, I do, I do weekly vlogs from Patreon so they get to see like all the behind scenes stuff for my wedding, what I do on my days off. Like they get to see all of that for them. And uh, now all my friends are just used to it. I pull up the camera like, hey, so blah, 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 blah. And now like, I'm, they're just so used to it. So um, yeah, you definitely get used to it. Does it get overwhelming having so many followers message you? It does, because every day I have 99 plus messages on my Instagram DMs and um, it can be overwhelming because I want to try to respond back to everybody that I can, but it just gets to be too much. It starts to freeze up my app and realistically, I just I can't respond back to everybody in my primary, my general, and my request that it just gets to be a lot, especially if I have a giveaway going on. Oh God, if I have a giveaway going on, I don't ever check my request out at that time because the amount of messages that I get of people demanding to win, begging to be picked, screenshotting me that they followed all the rules. Uh, it's just, it gets to be too much. And those people, I'm like, you're just here just for the giveaway. Like I'm not stupid, but it does get to be overwhelming. And uh, please know that like I do, your, I do see your messages. And if I don't respond, that doesn't mean anything. I just try to get back to everybody that I can. It just, it does get to be a little overwhelming and, uh, especially since like at the end of the day, I, I still don't view myself that way. I'm like, I'm just, I'm just me. I'm just little old me. Like I don't do anything special. Like I, I don't. And I just like, I'm not like Jaclyn Hill is big famous influencer. I'm just me, you know? And it just, yeah, I, I totally, I don't think I'll ever get used to it. How do you stay afloat doing YouTube full time as a small creator? I don't. I don't, I have a Patreon and I have my husband's support, but right now as a small YouTube creator, I truly don't. I mean, there's some out there who I know are doing great for themselves, but I'm just not there yet, but I'm just not there yet. And that's okay. Maybe one day I will be, maybe one day I won't. Maybe this will always just be a passion and hobby of mine and that's completely okay if it is. But yeah, um, I to answer your question, I don't. Do you, how do you deal with self-comparison? Um, It's hard not to compare yourself. Like I know people, tell you not to, but it's, it's really hard 
not to compare yourself sometimes and people get upset with me because like when I do like my declutter series I mention like Paige's setup versus mine and people get mad like oh you shouldn't do that but Mike I'm she's one of my closest friends and I don't mean it in any way when I compare her stuff to myself her she's actually what I aspire to be when I look at her beauty room when I look at her content when I look at her declutter series when her and I talk about a lot of things behind the scenes I tell her all the time you're my inspiration you're my goal you're like what I want to achieve so I don't mean it any negatively when I compare myself to her or to anybody it's just these are people that I aspire to to one day have like they're they're living like my dream and they're my inspiration they're what I'm aspiring to be so when I see them hitting their goals I'm like perfect yes like it gets me like motivated like let's do let's do this let's go let's go so I don't ever take comparison negatively I take it as all right perfect perfect we're gonna go we're gonna like they're they're getting me like all revved up like yeah I could do this too so uh it's you do because you're only human but I don't view it ever as competition or jealousy or anything that I view it as perfect they just set a goal they just set a bar I must strive to hit that too. Just, you know, I, I, that's, that's, that's always how my mind worked. Filming routine. How long do you edit? How long, how long for one video to made, to complete, money made? Filming, it really just depends on what it is that you're filming and whatnot. Like if I'm filming any sort, of, it takes me probably like two, two and a half hours to film, depending. I'm estimating if I can, especially if there's anything that has to do with me reading shit. <laughs> I don't know why. The amount of times that I stutter, mess up over words, read too fast, I swear it takes me forever to film those scenes because it's just... <laughs> you guys can just see my bloopers. You guys can just see my bloopers. How? And that's that's cutting down the bloopers, by the way. I cut them down. Otherwise, it'd be like 10 minute long worth of bloopers. But uh it can that can take like two and a half hours roughly to film and then to edit again that could take anywhere between three three and a half hours it really just depends on how long the video is how much i have to cut out how much is just blank space from not talking how many times are freaking messed up and i have to edit that out to make it work uh, it really just depends and then you have to go and process the video then you have to also do the upload the video all while you have to work on the thumbnail then you have to do the title the description the tags any sort of linking that you may have then you got to sit there and upload it to youtube and then you got to make sure you, you tag it on ig twitter and then you gotta make sure you're engaging with your audience and responding to comments it can take like i'll, I'll, I'll I'll word it this way sometimes i'll start filming around 12 o'clock and i'll be done with everything about 7 30 8 o'clock typically but then i'm not done because then i sit on my phone afterwards and respond to every single comment that i can i tend to respond to comments up until i go to bed and then once i go to bed i will let those comments just lay to rest and the next day because i i try it's I used to pride myself on responding back to every single comment and now it's just so unrealistic because I get about 250 to 300 comments per video and I post every single day for the most part. I think I only ever miss Sunday, Saturday, Sunday and I post pretty much every single day. So imagine getting those comments every single day and they're still like, if, like right now, I'm still getting, getting comments on my Barbie collection, on my BoxyCharm video, on my... Um, whatever video was before that I'm still getting those comments rolling in daily so I'm trying to keep up with those as well so it's why like I set a bar that by the time I go lay in bed I no longer respond to comments for that night so I could spend some time with my husband and not just focus so solely on YouTube but they can definitely pile up and it just it takes it takes all day like it really does take all day um but I don't mind it because I love it did you think you'd be here when you started um no I uh, never thought that I'd be here when I started. Um, every time I get, every time I think about this question, I get emotional just because I never ever thought that I would be sitting here with like 35,000 subscribers. Like it's just, and that may not seem like a lot to some people, but when you start off, like getting your first few hundred subscribers is incredibly hard. Oh, the amount of work that you put in, to try to get just one view, one subscriber, like it's so hard. It truly is hard. So to know what I started off at and how hard I worked to get to my first thousand subscribers now to be sitting at 35 is something that I can never, ever, ever say thank you enough. And 35 is still a lot to me. And like I said, it's not a lot to a lot of people, but it's everything to me. And I never, I never thought I'd be here. And it's, it's amazing. How do you balance YouTube and personal life? Uh, 
Tammy, if I'm gonna be really real with you, it takes a lot of sacrifice to do YouTube. I mean, truly, if you it's something you really wanna do, it takes a lot of sacrifice. Um, I typically have to say no to a lot of times my friends wanting to hang out. I had, I've always had to say no for majority of the times. Um, if there's a launch, I would have to give up my shift at work. I would have to call out. I could never hang out with friends because I would literally be so consumed with YouTube. And even though I'm just doing this right now, legit, it still takes up five to six days out of the week where I am like, sorry, I can't do stuff. I'm doing YouTube. I have to film. I have to get this review out. I have to go buy this launch. Um, it takes a lot of time away and it's a very, it's a very lonely job. I think it's something that people don't ever talk enough about. It's a very lonely job because at the end of the day, I'm sitting in this room by myself. Like I know you guys are watching, but I'm still by myself. You know, I film a lot when Corey's at work and or when he's streaming or he's doing his homework or doing doing class or whatever he's doing. I'm still here by myself and then I go to my computer, I edit, I do everything by myself. And it could be a very, very isolating job and very lonely job because there's just things that you see your friends going out and doing and having fun. And you're like, oh, I wish I can do that, but I can't, I'm doing YouTube. So it's hard to balance it out, but I have started to set, set more boundaries for myself. That way I make it so that the weekends, I don't do YouTube on the weekends. I don't really post any content. I don't talk about YouTube. I try to just focus on my family and my friends and just make that dedicated time for them because before I never did. Before I just let it consume my entire world and it started to be a little mentally exhausting going, I just wanna spend time with you. I just wanna hang out and I realized, you know, as much as I love doing this, I do need to have a little bit of a balance. So the weekends I tend to make off limits, just spending time with my friends and family and learning to have a little bit of me time too. How long and how often did you post before you saw progressive and effective change? I think when I first started posting back in October, 2018, I think I really started to see a growth on my channel when I did the I Heart Revolution donut palettes and when I did my L'Oreal Infallibro Pro Matte Foundation versus my L'Oreal uh, 24 Hour Fresh Wear Foundation, those two videos right there probably garnered about like 10,000 views. That's when I really started to see a growth in my channel. Someone asked me, is it worth it? 100% yes. Every single blood, sweat, tears that have gone into this channel Everything that when I have been down on my knees crying hysterically to my top moment of joy has been worth it. And I would never ever change a damn thing about it. How do you budget for beauty products? I don't. Um, if I really, really need something, I ask my husband, and I know I hate saying that, but he really will step up and he'll cover a certain bill so that I can get a beauty launch so I could do it for my channel. Do you ever wanna call it quits? I have numerous times but um luckily when i when i get into that headspace i talk to my husband and i talk to my best friends and they remind me about this moment right here and uh yeah what is it like having bigger youtubers mention you um <laughs> it is definitely a moment um i never ever 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 thought that manny in me way would be like Allie Dawson. I'm like, how the fuck do you know my name? How do you know my name? Like that, that is just so like, bitch, I have watched you for years and you somehow said my name out of your mouth. <laughs> like, it's just such a moment. It is just it, that, it, that's a moment that I remember for the rest of my life. Um, that and when Laura Lee mentioned me, uh, when Jacqueline Hill shared my lobster video on her IG story, I was like, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> Jacqueline, like, you know, that was, uh, I, that was, that was a moment. I think the biggest one is if Robert E. Christie ever does it. Um, if Robert E. Christie ever says Allie Dawson out of her mouth, probably cry like a little bitch. <laughs> oh God. Um, I really like this question. Are you attached to some of your viewers? Yeah, I am hardcore. Uh, it's, it's funny because I, I, I recognize you guys. Like I recognize a lot of your names and, um, sometimes I'm going to be stalkerish and I'll stalk you out on Instagram. Cause I'm always like, Ooh, who's watching me? You know? So I am a hundred percent attached to my viewers, especially my Patreon members. Cause it's just more of a, um, 
a tighter knit community because like we talk more one on one. It's a great way just to, for me and you to have a personal conversation. And yeah, I because we because we do we do Zoom calls and so like legit like twenty five of us will sit on a Zoom call for two or three hours just like shooting the shit and just really getting to know each other. So I am for sure attached to a few, some of my viewers. There are some. Um, there's one in particular, her name is Mandy King, and she is legit one of my OG subscribers. I mean, she has been around since I had like two or 300 subscribers. And when I still see her name pop up, I'm like, Mandy, Mandy's still here. Like that means so much to me that there's been people I've seen literally from the beginning still here on my channel. I'm like, oh. Like, I, I love it. I recognize a lot of your guys' names. What are some of your goals for your YouTube platform? Um, Honestly, my goal for my YouTube platform is I'm dying to reach 100,000 subscribers. Like, I have such a great idea for a video, and I'm dying to reach 100,000. But I think my goal is to be able to be big enough where I can financially take care of me and my husband where my husband doesn't have to work and I can take care of my parents like that is my biggest goal <laughs> that's my goal is I want to be able to take care of um, my family um just because my, my parents have done so much for me especially the last year and a half so my goal would be able to have a big enough platform where not only can I take care of my husband and my family but I can give back and to you guys in a way that you guys have given so much to me and I don't want to like get emotional about it but um yeah I just want to be able to I don't care to have like millions of freaking subscribers I don't care about that I just want to be able to financially be able to take care of us and be okay I think this is a really good question it says how do you know when to trust a brand when they want to send you stuff um I I've gotten screwed over by a lot of brands. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I legit am very, very turned off to a lot of brands out there um, because of how they treat me versus how they treat other influencers. Um, it's amazing to me when you guys see the behind the scenes, how much your numbers affect how you're treated so that the smaller that you are, the more insignificant you are to these brands. So you, I, I go out of my way when I do videos for people, I go out of my way to make it special. I buy all these extra stuff to have so much fun with videos and some brands just don't care about that. They care about all the zeros that you have behind your name. Um, they don't care about your content. They don't watch your content, but they want X, Y, and Z out of you. And it really is disheartening. Um, I've gotten burned more times than not from brands and maybe one day I'll, I'll call out these brands, but today's not that day, today's not that video, but just know that like, I'm very turned off from a lot of brands. Um, I really am because it just amazes me how much you don't matter unless you have numbers backing you. You really, really, really don't. And that's, that's sad. And I think the brands that have probably treated me with the utmost respect are small indie brands. They're the nicest brands you guys will ever see is how these indie brands really do treat people compared to how these big brands do. Some of these big brands treat you like you are just chump change to them because you don't bring nothing to them, but they want free, free advertisement from you. So I... Um, don't really trust a lot of brands and I that's why I am kind of grateful I don't get PR because it just allows me to just stick to my own lane so I'm noticing that a lot of these questions are in reference to money and like how much money do you make or how do you make money like how does it all work like I said in the beginning it really all just depends about pretty much about the amount of views that you get because you get like a CPM and that pretty much tells you what you can make per a thousand views so like typically i think per a thousand views you get like 10 to 20 dollars just depending but you guys also got to take in one big factor youtube takes 55 percent of your earnings so i only earn 45 percent of what i make because youtube takes a big portion of it on their channel for themselves so it, you you can make fantastic money on youtube i'm just not one of those creators i do and that's completely okay but like I said, it all depends about the amount of views that you have in your video and how much engagement you have on your video, how long someone watches your video for. That's a big, big factor. It really doesn't have to do too much with your following, just about the views, the length, 
and your click rate is what really like all gets inputted for how much money that you make. So um, how far in advance do you plan your videos? About a week out. About a week out do I plan my videos. Um, I think this will probably be like one of the last questions that I answer, but it says, what is your biggest lessons you've learned doing YouTube, makeup, filming, and everything? I think one of the biggest lessons that I learned truly was to just be yourself. At the end of the day, just be yourself. Um, don't try to be anything that you're not. Just come on here and do what you love. And if this is something that you want to do, you should go for it. You really, really should because you don't ever want to look back and think, what if? What if? Uh, if this fails and I never go anywhere beyond this point, I could still look at it and smile going, well, I tried my best. I gave it my all and I did what I loved. And that's what I want you guys to do. I don't I get asked all the time, how do you start a YouTube channel? I'm so scared. I'm so scared about hate this and that. Don't, don't look at it like that. Like just look at it as you're going on camera, you're doing this for you. And whether you're making a video for one person or a million people, you give it your all and you give it everything that you have and you just love doing it. You truly do just love doing it. Just love yourself and just follow your dream. That, that's the biggest advice I can give you is just follow your dream because you never want to look back on life and think, what if? What if? Because you don't know. One video of yours can go viral and that can skyrocket your entire career and your whole life can change just like that. So um, I hope I answered a lot of these questions. I still have so much more questions that I haven't been able to get through. I just said this video is already so long, but I just really wanted to answer the questions that I saw a lot of around the same things was the topic about money and all the type of stuff. So just know that as a small influencer, I get treated a lot differently compared to a lot of bigger influencers because of the amount of followers that I have. And it is what it is. Um, do I let it bother me? No, because I come on here and I do what I love. So that means more to me than anything else in the world. And uh, please don't assume that every single YouTuber makes a lot of money because majority of us don't. Uh, it takes a long time to get to like the James Charles, Jaclyn Hill, Jeffree Star level of success. Like it takes a long time to make that sort of money. So um, we're all out here chugging, doing the best that we can. So uh, yeah, guys, that is it for today's video. Hope you guys like this video. If you do, please make sure you guys give this video a cheeky thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you guys have not already. So I do post three to four, mostly five times a week. Make sure you guys head over to my other channel. It's R40 Life where you guys get to see my cool, wonderful adventures, my amazing husband, Corey. And a huge, huge thank you to all these beautiful Patreon members that you guys see right here. Thank you guys so much for everything. And to my subscribers and viewers, thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. Whether you guys like this video, you guys thumbs down this video, you guys subscribed, you guys did not subscribe. Either way, thank you guys so much for being here. I love and appreciate every single one of you. And I will definitely see you guys in the very next video. Bye.